In this video, we're going to be revisiting our good old friend, Brightside. After many Trend Max videos that are getting repetitive, we're going to go back to our roots, Brightside. Anyway, enjoy. The problem with that asteroid that destroyed dinosaurs, not all dinosaurs went extinct, but all non-avian dinosaurs went extinct, was not that it fell, but where it fell. This colossal space rock found the worst place where it could land. Also, the angle at which it hit the ground was the most unfortunate. If it had fallen vertically, there would have been less destruction. But I assume it would actually puncture deeper into the ground. The dust still comes in, and then there's lots of earthquakes and stuff, volcanic eruptions, all of those crazy toxic dust and stuff, blocking out the sunlight. Everything would still happen, and it would actually be quite similar. Also, there is little evidence for sufficient amounts of organic matter at a Chicxulub impact site. So, ironically, non-avian dinosaurs would have went extinct in some way. But it fell at such an angle that it threw a huge amount of dust into the air. After the disaster occurred, tons of soot started burning. 65 million years ago, only 13% of Earth's surface contained the right amount of sulfur and oil needed to form a colossal amount of soot. If the asteroid had fallen on the other 87% of the territory, dinosaurs could still be living today, but it hit the worst place and lifted a million tons of burning material into the sky. While this theory is based on some research, obviously, there are other paleontologists who argue that the asteroid released killer amounts of not soot, but gas. Carbon dioxide and sulfur gases blown extremely high into the atmosphere would have the opposite of a greenhouse effect, plummeting the surface temperatures by around more than 20 degrees Celsius. A cloud of incandescent particles covered the sky and set off on a journey across the mainland. Then, these particles settled on the ground and caused large-scale fires. Trees were burning and sending more soot into the sky. But the asteroid collided not only with rocks, it fell on the coast in a place where the seabed was filled with sulfate. As a result of the collision, it started burning. You know those sulfate burning, you know, sulfur dioxide and stuff, were one of the causes for the mass extinction, it probably wasn't because the reason is because the gas all blocked out the sun, causing photosynthesis to stop, which caused herbivores to die, which caused carnivores to die, which caused the release of sulfuric acid into the atmosphere. The air became poisoned. It seems the dinosaurs didn't stand a chance. Dude, you're missing out on a killing blow. This isn't a killing blow. And now, let's imagine the asteroid falling in another place, somewhere in the middle of the ocean. Huge waves flooded part of the land, but almost all kinds of dinosaurs survived. Or even better, the rock could have fallen somewhere in the desert and left behind a giant crater. That's all. Yes, several dinosaurs passing by wouldn't have survived the collision, but the situation wouldn't have been so critical in general. So, giant lizards remain dominant on our planet. Why does this sound so similar to the cow from Minecraft? Am I hearing something wrong here? They don't allow other animals to develop since Tyrannosaurus and other ferocious reptiles hunt mammoths and other ancient creatures. Mammoths wouldn't exist anyway had non-avian dinosaurs never went extinct. Mammals only diversified because they had to fill in the gap of those food chains that the non-avian dinosaurs left behind. The population of mammals is decreasing. Velociraptors are fighting for territories with saber-toothed tigers. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, there are multiple problems with this one. First of all, you're showing a... What is this crazy, scaly Velociraptor? Second, it's not saber-toothed tiger, it's saber-toothed cat. Smile at dawn and giant bears. A struggle for survival between dinosaurs and other animals begins. A struggle between non-avian dinosaurs and those mammals wouldn't exist because mammals wouldn't have evolved because non-avian dinosaurs are still there. Also, these, these dinosaurs over here, they're just 
standing upright like a kangaroo. Then the Ice Age comes, and some reptiles don't survive. Then new players enter the field. Those are humans' early ancestors. You know, it would be an absolute miracle if humans managed to evolve even if non-avian dinosaurs are still there to terrorize the lands. Living side by side with dinosaurs is difficult. Lizards attack settlements and caves, so people have to build high walls for protection. By the way, the Tyrannosaurus poses less danger to people than you might have thought. According to the latest research, many creatures were able to run away from this monster. It is an animal. Yes, you probably saw how easily they caught up with cars in the movies, but it wouldn't be as scary in reality. Paleontologists and biologists have analyzed the strength of dino's bones and found out that the creature couldn't reach high speeds. The maximum it was capable of was running twice as slow as a field athlete. Look at his absolute monstrosity of an outdated T-Rex model. Look at this madness. Thousands of years have passed. People have learned to live with dinosaurs. They've even managed to tame some lizards. At this point, why am I even trying to say that this scenario is ridiculous to its very core? You know what? Let's just go along with all of these crazy, crazy scenarios where humans managed to evolve even when non-avian dinosaurs are still there. Non-avian dinosaurs, they look like they haven't changed much, dude. They've domesticated herbivorous dinosaurs to develop agriculture. Triceratopses and bulls now plow fields together. Imagine farms swarming with diplodocuses or brachiosauruses. People climb their long necks and pick fruit from high trees. Stegosauruses protect pastures from wolves and velociraptors. Okay, one thing. Stegosaurus, Diplodocus, and Brachiosaurus all went extinct after the late Jurassic. So, really, there's no way that they would manage to continue to exist even if non-avian dinosaurs did not go extinct. Dinosaurs with shells, such as Ankylosauruses, help people across deserts. The Ankylosaurus does not gallop like this. This is just absolutely ridiculous. They, along with camels and donkeys, carry heavy loads. People share the planet with ancient lizards and live in harmony. The situation in the seas and oceans is much worse. Sea reptiles attack wooden ships and catch all the fish. Imagine that you're sailing to another continent with tons of grain, fabrics, fur, and other goods. And then a giant mosasaur appears on the horizon. It's one of the most powerful sea lizards. You send the title, you're already deviating from the title because the mosasaurus is not a dinosaur. It is just a mosasaur. A great white shark looks like a small fish next to it. The Mosasaurus isn't that long, you know? I feel like if you put a Megalodon in, the Megalodon still wouldn't be that long. Also, this Mosasaurus mall is just completely and utterly ridiculous. The creature could easily defeat a Megalodon. No, the Megalodon would 100% beat the Mosasaurus. The Mosasaurus is simply too small, especially compared to something with the most powerful white force of any animal to have ever lived. And then it comes across a wooden ship. It bites into the deck and pulls the whole boat underwater. But the Mosasaurus be this bloodthirsty, it kind of reminds me of the Indominus Rex right now. Water dinosaurs. Water dinosaurs. This is just... What am I even looking at right now? This is absolutely mad. ...are the main obstacle to communication between countries. This slows the progress down for a hundred years. People built metal ships to withstand the attacks of the Mosasaur. And finally, they managed to establish sea connections. A similar problem occurs when the first planes take off into the sky. Imagine you're flying on a passenger Boeing. You look out of the window and see a pterodactyl. That is not a dinosaur. Also, what sort of pterodactyl are you referring to? Referring to? Like, Pteranodon or Pterodactylus? Ah, uh, wait, it's impossible. These winged lizards aren't so fast but they can catch up with a helicopter or some old biplanes. 
This poses a serious threat to flights, so people install sound protection systems on board each aircraft. You really made an unconvincing edit right there. This pterosaur is becoming more and more blurry and blurry. Pterodactyls hear irritating ultrasound from a distance and fly as far away from it as possible. People equip submarines and ships with the same sound shields. Then, after people have learned how to defend themselves from dinosaurs, another problem appears. Lizards are the kings of wildlife, so they displace all other animal species. Dinosaurs run across African savannas, and lizards with fur live in cold winter forests. Lions, wolves, and bears are not the rulers of the wild. Now, here's another question. Would non-avian dinosaurs be able to survive in present-day climates? Also, yet another question. What would the planet's ecology be? You know, its climates and stuff. Had the asteroid not impacted the Earth? Rhinos fight with parasaurolophysis. Stegosauruses attack hippos and take away their territories. Well, this kind of makes sense because, you know, herbivores are territorial creatures. Venomous dinosaurs live in jungles. What am I even looking at? Lizards that can climb trees scare monkeys. Imagine a reptilian ape jumping from one branch to another. To save regular animals from extinction, People have to control the population of predatory reptiles. Huge parks and nature reserves appear in all countries. People transport dinosaurs there and separate them from other wildlife. Is this just Jurassic Park all over again? I wouldn't be surprised if it is just Jurassic Park all over again. No way, Jurassic Park clones dinosaurs, creates them instead of just bringing them in. Sorry, my bad. Dinosaurs seem to be completely under control. When the danger caused by giant reptiles passes, people begin to breed smaller, harmless lizards. Someone buys a chameleon, and someone keeps a microceratus at home. There are dinosaur exhibitions. People take these creatures for a walk as if they were dogs. Some people take selfies with reptiles, go shopping, and sit in cafes with small lizards. You know, there really isn't much to talk about in this. It's just bright side doing typical bright side stuff. Dinosaurs aren't formidable now. They're kind of cute. People ride horses, camels, parasaurolophysis, and pachycephalosauruses. Of course, many have tried to tame velociraptors, but failed. Those are dangerous reptiles, and they don't know how to obey. How do you assume their behavior? You're just making up assumptions right now. Taming them is almost as difficult as taming an alligator. But dogs and cats are still more popular because they're more intelligent. The brain of a dinosaur is almost the same as that of a chicken. Some studies say that T-Rex is very intelligent at uh, around similar intelligence to a chimpanzee, just slightly lower intelligence than a chimpanzee. But who knows, if they had lived to this day, perhaps they would have evolved into smarter creatures. Just imagine if dinos were intelligent. In this case, people would have a big problem. Some scientists think that even if a meteorite hadn't destroyed the dinosaurs, they wouldn't have survived to this day. They needed to carry their own colossal weight at all times. It was an enormous load on their bones and joints. Most dinosaurs wouldn't have been able to survive the Ice Age with such characteristics. Exactly. I don't know how non-avian dinosaurs would survive and all. But smaller lizards might have succeeded. Fast and agile dinosaurs, such as Velociraptors and Pachycephalosauruses, would have survived. But in what form? Could dinosaurs have already evolved into something else? Look at the good old chicken. Many scientists believe it's a direct descendant of the formidable Tyrannosaurus. No, it isn't. Even though the Tyrannosaurus was a Silurosaurian, it would not evolve into something like a chicken. Somewhere deep inside the bird's DNA, there are genes that the dinosaur had. Yep, it's hard to believe, but look at the chicken's body structure and how it walks. Remove the plumage, cover the creature with scales, and give it toothy jaws instead of a beak. And now, you have a mini T-Rex in the coop. Oh my goodness, this is one of the worst parts of the video thus far. The, 
I'm just brain rotted. And by the way, not only chickens might be the relatives of giant lizards, many birds are dinosaurs' living descendants. Surprisingly, alligators, snakes, crocodiles, and monitor lizards are not as close to ancient reptiles as pelicans, storks, and other flying creatures. Define ancient reptiles. This is the most confusing statement ever. Over millions of years of evolution, the paws of dinosaurs turned into wings and toothy elongated jaws ended up as beaks. The genetics of birds is the key to understanding dinosaurs. Pelicans are similar to pterodactyls. Except the pterodactyls, or should I say pterosaurs, are not dinosaurs. Ostriches to velociraptors. Perhaps many other animals also share some genes with ancient lizards. If the meteorite hadn't fallen, all dinosaurs would have evolved into completely different, unusual creatures. Scientists want to carefully study the DNA of birds and try to reverse evolution with the help of genetic engineering. The most you get is probably just a small theropod that dates from, I don't know, the late Jurassic or something. Or maybe the first birds that ever lived, you know, the ones in early Cretaceous. They hope to breed dinosaurs out of eggs one day. But to do this, they need to find a specific genome that hasn't changed over tens of millions of years. It hides in the DNA. There's yet another problem. Non-avian dinosaurs have gone extinct for so long that their DNA is just decayed. I mean, this could work, but I don't know what sort of, um, some sort of bird ancestor would we get. Also, it's much more likely that we'd get a random theropod creature. And it's not so easy to find it and extract it. Do you think we will see powerful reptiles by 2050? This is the end of the video. Absolutely awful, as you can see. Another bright side classic over here. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you on the next one.